Okay, so here we go. So let's just start with a quick introduction. My name is Janet, that's my real name, and you guys know me as JD right here. Oops. And I'm the Office Student Mentor, and I'm just here to assist students towards completion of their pen to wonder journey. Always here for you guys. Uh, you can see me on Discord helping uh, your fellow students with their pen to wonder questions. Let it be for exercises or labs. And what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to get started uh, with after the introduction. And I'm going to turn off my camera so that our entire focus will be on my screen because this time we are going to cover Active Directory. Yes, so I know there are many people uh, watching live who are interested in Active Directory, and there are some who are not interested that much. But at the end of this video, uh, of this walkthrough, I can assure you that uh, those of you who are not interested, I will make them interested. So, I mean, let's get right into it. So like I said, we are going to be uh, covering the Hutch machine of Proving Grounds practice. And this is going to be Active Directory. And the reason why we did Active Directory this time is because uh, we have been doing a lot of web ones previously. And this time we specifically wanted to do some Active Directory content in this live uh, stream. And uh, to be honest with you guys, this machine is really short. It only has like three to four steps, but I'm gonna make it long. And this is how I'm gonna do it. So I'm going to be using multiple tools for the same step in order to make it more interesting so that we are not dependent on a single tool. And also at the end, we are going to cover the mitigation so that, you know, like it's not all about attacking every time. It's also about understanding on what to fix exactly, like how did that happen? Many of you might be having questions like, uh, why did that happen? And uh, what made that happen and i'm going to be explaining in the mitigation part which is going to be really interesting so let's begin with uh no further ado i'm gonna show my carry Okay, you guys can see my Kali screen. I'm gonna connect to the VPN real quick. Maybe I'm already connected. Okay, there we go. I can just close down this terminal. And let's just uh, fire up Hutch. I'm just going to turn off my camera right now so that all the focus is on the screen. So video, OK. All right, there we go. So let's start by exporting this IP. All right. Uh, I'm going to make a new directory called Arch and a new directory called Nmap. And the way I do my network scanning is a bit different. So I normally use Rust scan to conduct a port scan to save time. So here's how I do it exactly. As you can see, it gave me the open ports like really quick. And I don't think Nmap can give that ports like really quickly as compared to Rust scan. So that's the reason why I use it. And <clears throat> I can just narrow my Nmap scan and save some time, to be honest. Like that's how I do it. So this is gonna like give me all the open ports. I'm just gonna save that into a file. And that's how I can like 
save some time. So you see, I use the cut and the trim command to like arrange all these ports uh, separate by the commas. And now I can just simply do it like this. So what I just did here is like nmap dash p, and I just specified this command line into uh, the p parameter, which is for the ports. So basically, how will this be? Is and I'm just gonna do a script scan and a version scan, and just gonna output this to nmap touch and. IP. Okay, so let's just wait for it. It should take like two minutes, quite honestly. Okay. Hmm, interesting. Okay, it's back up. Oh, before we do it, I would just, I can just decrease my NPU rate. And now I think we should be good. We should give the results in like two minutes. Any time now. Um no it's not retired kenny uh it's like still active you can check it under proving grounds practice uh just like it's showing up here for me if you can see my screen uh under the proving grounds and yeah i can i can use grab but uh i'm more comfortable with the trim command um should get the results anytime now okay 18 seconds Let's give this a drum roll and it should be here. Okay, there we go. So yeah, that was a bit late, but still, I would consider it a bit quick. So as you can see, this is a domain controller. And why is it a domain controller? It's because we have right here, uh, we have the DNS port open, and we have Kerberos, and we have RPC, we have LDAP, we have LDAP again. So and it's also showing us the domain name, which is hutch.offsec. So I'm going to note this down. And if you guys uh, see this as well, it, it has also given us the host name, which is hutch.dc. So the full name would be hutch.dc. Hutch.offset. I'm going to save this in my host file. I think I've already done that though. One eighty seven. And we are good to go. So let's start our enumeration with HTTP. And as you guys can see, uh, it says that web dav is enabled and which is really interesting because web dav is basically an extra layer on the web application which allows um, to like upload files i think web dav is used by uh, like a group of people who are like collaborating on a project 
So I mean, they can just uh, drop their files. Uh, for example, if I'm building a web application with a few of my friends, so we can use WebDAV to, to just like drop our codes into the share and it will just uh, get ended up in the web directory. So we have WebDAV. Let's check out this web server real quick. So this is just a default IAS page. We can further it further. I'm gonna use Ferox Buster because Rust is the future and Ferox Buster is, is coded in Rust. Same, same goes for Rust Scanner as well. So let's see if we have any unusual directories before we move on to the next part. So, this is ASP.NET client, which is default directory. Nothing new about this. Hmm. I'm going to let it run for some time so that we can just go forward to. Our next generation. OK. So while we are having the fuzzing uh, in the background, we're just gonna check out if there's anything unusual. And I don't see anything other than this that application though. And we are not getting anything here. So let's check. Uh, so the, the next thing I would check is just connecting to the web DAV share right here on port 80. So as what I do is simply when we have any tech breaks. And this is what I do every time. Like if I face a new software or a new technology, I always check the hat page if it's already been covered. And like we can see, it's suggesting a tool to us, which is called Cadaver. And you simply have to just Cadaver. Oh, I think. Okay. This is really annoying. Okay, there we go. So I'm just going to connect to this IP using Cadaver and see if I can get inside the web DAV share or maybe we are lucky and it is set up with some default credentials, which I don't think would be the case. So just want to try admin, admin. Nope, so no luck right here. And I don't really think we are going to find something interesting in this, uh, in the web application. So the next thing I always try in any Active Directory domain controller is anonymous authentication. And I always start uh, connecting on anonymously to uh, RPC. I will try to connect on anonymously to SMB client. I mean, SMB, I mean, SMB client is a tool. And we can also try anonymous connection to LDAP. So, So this is how we can connect to our PC client uh, anonymously. And uh, I just recall this command on the top of my head. Okay, so we can actually uh, connect to this on anonymously. And okay, so it's status decline. So we can't actually. Uh, let's move on to SMB. I'm just gonna let the shares. Oops, my bad. And it's like this. Okay, so no luck in SMB as well. Let's see what else do we have here. <clears throat> so we have tried RPC, we have tried SMB. Now all we have left is LDAP. 
And it is possible to connect to LDAP as well uh, anonymously, but I would be needing some help with the syntax. So I'm just, I'm just gonna search for the Hectrix page of LDAP for some help with the syntax. And there we go. I don't know what just happened. Okay. And there we can see anonymous access, which is like a heading in this uh, Hectrix page. So that means this is possible. And uh, the most common tools that we can try is LDAP search. So let's try this syntax right here, which is basically logging to LDAP using null credentials. So let me just copy this down real quick. And LDAP is basically, uh, uh, basically, uh, how shall I say this? It's like a phone book of Active Directory. The basically how you save your contacts in your mobile is basically with uh, Active Directory. It's those informations about the users. It has attributes, and attributes are related to like personal information. For example, uh, office number and uh, the designation. So you can find all these things in LDAP. And I'm just gonna show you real quick. Uh, So I'm just gonna update the entries and okay. And before I do that, I would just like to show you that the first thing it concluded and we have not find anything interesting. So I'm just gonna uh, take, we just gonna like um, get into the web application on a later time, but let's check out if you can log in into LDAP anonymously. And seems like we can. So let's go through this output and just gonna do the less command. Okay. So just like I said, it's like a phone book. And you guys can see uh, this is about the user guest. And uh, sorry, this that was the OU. And this is the o OU as well, which is your organization unit. And uh, if we scroll down, we might find something in the description, which could be useful because that's how it goes with LDAP. Nothing interesting. So this is the group DNS admins. And as you can see, it has all the attributes for DNS admins, but this is not related. So. Let's just keep scrolling. Oh yeah, so this is a user, Rosaline. And uh, as you can see, this is like a phone book. I mean, this is like an um, organized uh, information about this user. So we have the distinguished name, the, which, is, which, is, which we call DN in Active Directory. And this is exactly what DN is, which is the LDAP name of this user. And we have the full name of this user right here. And we have the same account name. And, but we have nothing interesting. Let me just keep scrolling until we do find something interesting. Okay. Okay, so there we go. Now, this user, Freddy McSorley, um, we have his attributes called description. So most probably what this user did is um, he changed his, he added this description for his own convenience because he couldn't remember the password. And he literally has mentioned his password in his description. And to our luck, we are able to log into LDAP anonymously. And we can read his password from his description. And because of this misconfiguration, we might be able to use this password on the web DAV share. But before we do that, let's just find some other ways to do this. I mean, to like log in anonymously to LDAP, uh, except the LDAP search utility. Let's just try something else uh, just to make it interesting. So let's see what we can use from down here. 
we have LDAP surge all around. I think we can use crack map exact actually. I just uh, recall about this. So we can also use crack map exact to like dump the description of this user as well. So I'm just gonna do this null authentication. Oops. Okay, so just before I, I fix this situation with crack map exec, I just want you want to inform you everyone that crack map exec is not anymore uh maintained. Let me just show you guys real quick. So as you guys as you guys can see, this report, this entire project has been archived by the owner. So uh what went down is basically um I think uh the founder of this tool, I think his uh, no, name is Byte Leader. I think he uh, dropped out of maintaining crack map exec. And the rest of his team, they went ahead to create a new project, which is called NetExec. And I think we should use NetExec, to be honest, because uh, this will be the tool which is going to be replacing crack map exec. And uh, let's check its wiki. And we can install it real quick. Install for Unix. So I've already installed this. Um, I've already installed NetExec and I use pipx. And as you can see, It's working for me right now. And uh, now we can use the wiki that they have for the LDAP. So let's check authentication. And the syntax is also similar to crap with X. So no one will be having any problems to figure out the syntax. So let's just try it like this. Okay, here we go again, fingers crossed. All right, so as you guys can see, it showed us uh, a valid logon since we can uh, log in anonymously. And similarly, I think we can just add a flag. Uh, let me just find that real quick. I think it was like user description or something. Um, but so the syntax is like really similar to crack map exact user's description and that. Okay, so I think that's where I got this syntax from. I think it was like something like this. Let's see if that works.
okay, yeah, I think this was the correct flag. Okay, there we go. All right. Sorry for that. It took a bit of time. But yeah, as you guys as you guys can see, I also managed to dump the user's description using net exec. So I showed you how you can on uh, log in anonymously to LDAP using LDAP search and net exec. And I think you can use crap map exec as well. You just got to replace crack map exact like this, but I think uh, for some reason it's not working on my end. I have to fix it, but it doesn't really matter because I am using net exact these days. So just for fun, I did I did the same process using two tools just to reduce like dependency. And now do we have the description? We can just connect to it using Pedaver. Just put in the username and just copy paste the password and we are in as you guys can see we are right inside the web web root of the web, web application that means whatever i upload right here it will end end up uploaded like i can like browse the file that particular file right here in this web application and since this is an is uh, application what we want to do is you want to put uh, ASP exception because IAS uh, only understands ASPX and we already have one in our Kali pre-installed right in this location. So that's it. And I think it got uploaded as well. And I can just access this uh, web shell like this and voila. And as you can see, we've got code execution. And just gonna exit out of uh, Padaver, and let's catch this reverse shell. But before I catch the reverse shell, let me just show you guys an interactive shell for Windows. And what I use for this is invoke on PTY shell. This is really an amazing tool. And that's what I'm going to be using as well to get my reverse shell because this is going to be providing me some interactivity and like tab completion and all. So just going to start my listener as it's mentioned in the walkthrough. Oh, I mean the GitHub uh, wiki. And then we just have to do this command. Uh, so we can just do this in the web shell right here, but we have to import this locally first because this machine doesn't have internet. Oops. So just going to get this file on my Kali. All right. Let's just make sure if the contents are what it's supposed to be. All right, we are good. And now we can just simply host the Python server. Oh, it's already in use. We can just like use some other code. There we go. And we can just take this. So let me just modify this right here for a second. Let's take note of my tune uh tune OIP, which is this. And 
I'm just going to mention this IP and the connecting port. HTTP. Okay, so I think this should work. Let me see if I have mentioned, okay, I've not mentioned the port, so. Okay, I think it got, I think the IP went down. Um... I hate when this happens. <laughs> okay, so it did pick up, but for some reason. Okay, it is showing as up. Okay, we got the shell. Okay, that was really weird. So now that I have the shell, let me just show you how easy it would be for me to navigate with this to the shell. So, okay, I don't know what, uh, what just happened. Oops. Okay, there we go. So let me just show you. So now I, I'll just press tab and it, it will just auto complete it for me. So that's why I like uh, to use con PTY shell. And now we have a shell as IAS app pool. And any guesses, um, like I would just like to throw this question to you guys, like any guesses what could be the path because this user is vulnerable to a really common privilege. Like it comes with an inbuilt privilege, which calls for an unintended path. Any guesses? Yep. Yep, you're right. It's impersonation. And what if I press Control plus C? Nope, nothing's gonna happen. It's not gonna get canceled. Uh, I still have the shell. Yep, so since this is a service account, we have the inbuilt privilege and unfortunately we cannot fix this. I don't think we can. Of course, I mean, uh, we can do some firewall. So we have impersonation and just like you guys guessed, we are good to go with exploiting impersonation. So I'm gonna uh, abuse the impersonation privilege, just gonna do this as, a, as just for fun to be honest because why not right and afterwards we're going to do it intendedly so let's proceed with doing it unintendedly first so for impersonation i will be using the most famous tool in the discord server these days which is called god potato and uh, let's pull up to the github page of god potato oh yeah time for potato indeed god potato github and Hopefully it has a compiled release for me and it does. I'm really happy. And I can just copy the link address and just download this uh, on my Kali to transfer this onto the machine. I just got to copy my, this is really annoying. I keep forgetting my thumb, you know, IP. Let's make a temp directory. Is going to clear it. And I'm just going to use it. Uh, I'm just, just going to save it as gp.exe. So let's check out the GitHub page on how they are using this. I mean, the syntax, because I've never used this uh, tool. I mean, I'm just using this first time, quite honestly, in front of you guys, just for fun, to be honest. So, okay, it seems really simple. So, D.
And and it worked. It gave us anti-authority system, which is what it should give us. So let's simply now get a reverse shell. And I can just simply get a reverse shell from HTTPS refshell.com. I'm just going to grab my IP real quick. This is really annoying. So we're just going to update the IP and port and just going to grab this base 64 one because it's right. It's like really not at all complicated and it just works right off the bat. So you guys can see right here how it's going to work. Just going to copy paste this reverse shell and it should work quite honestly. It is spawning a process. Hmm, looks like, okay, there we go. Boom, we got it. And the authority. Now I'm just gonna use uh, another tool, which is my favorite and which is what I use on a daily basis, which is Sweet Potato. And I don't think there is a pre-compiled binary for Sweet Potato. Um, so GitHub. I don't think it provides the pre-compiled binary, but if example, if you guys are not able to find the pre-compiled binaries, what I do is go to this page, Sharp Collection, and they have all the binaries pre-compiled. So as you guys can see, they have like, specific versions of the .NET framework. So this one is 4.7, uh, 64 bit, and they have like everything. And I think they should have Sweet Potato as well. Oh yeah, they do. So we are good to go. So I've already cloned this directory under opt sharp collection. Yeah, so uh, I agree, like it is really time saving to like keep a structure of uh, files and directories, but I just want to like do it myself, um, like use Google myself and show you how I find, uh, how I research for things so that, you know, people can like learn a bit OSINT as well. So that's why I'm just like Googling and like, doing it with you, just like I'm doing it for the first time. So that's why I'm not using like, a specific file directory. So sweet potato, I'm just going to copy it down here. And I'm just going to copy this down to this. I'm just going to name it that s.exe. And this is like really my favorite tool because it works every time for me. And uh, let me just show you guys real quick. Oops. Okay, so this is uh, how I'm going, to, how we are going to figure out the syntax together. So this is the help menu. And uh, I think we should use dash E to specify the exploit mode. So they have DCOM in RM. I'm just gonna use my favorite EFS RPC. This is just like a protocol and it always works with EFS RPC. And then we can uh, simply like, okay, so before I do that, we need to uh, build uh, MSF, like a payload, a payload binary using MSF Venom. So, Let's just do it right real quick. L host and port is equal to 80 UFC and .exe. Let's name it as rev.exe, I guess. 
Oh, wait. So this is what you want to do. Shell uh, underscore reverse under, underscore TCP, which is for uh, which is for netcat. So let's just build this real quick. And we have to transfer this to the machine as well. Any second now. Mm. Okay. Uh, we've got the payload binary. Let's upload this right here. RWX. Okay. Now we are all set to run sweet potato. And how I do this is basically just go to the help option. Let me just clear it so you guys can see it uh, clearly. Okay, so let's just figure out the syntax. So I'm gonna do EFS RPC, and I'm going to mention my payload binary, which is mr.exe. And this should work like really quickly. And voila, there we go. I think it worked like really quicker than got potato. What you guys think on the chat? So, yeah, I mean that's how you can um, leverage impersonation privilege for a service account and get system using two different tools. And yeah, so let's just now uh, move towards um, the intended privilege escalation. So we now have a shell as IAS app tool. And we have credentials of this user. Oops, FMC. So we have the credential of this user and we have a shell as this service account. So the intended path here is a bit different and it is um, a new Active Directory concept for someone if they've not, uh, I mean, if I'm talking about pen 200 level, then it could be different. So let's just start doing our normal enumeration. I mean, let's just do it manually. I'm not gonna run win piece because everyone does it. So, you know, just for fun, let's just do it manually. So let's just enumerate the domain users. If there are any interesting groups, net local group domain. So let's see if we have any strange groups. Seems really default ones to me. Okay. Let's check net. Let's check the groups. Uh, these also seem really default to me as well. So no custom groups. And let's go ahead by uploading power view to be honest. So just gonna grab power view real quick. Okay, so this is uh, power view and let's just upload this into the machine. P dot, I'm just gonna name it as PV dot PS1. Just gonna upload this and it will allow me to because I think there is no restriction on executing scripts in this machine. So this got uploaded. And what I'm gonna use in, is invoke ACL spanner. And let's just find more about this module real quick. And let me just see the comments as well. Okay, so 
and go with ACL scanner. Look, if you have a uh, hat I think hat tricks might be having. <laughs> hat tricks on the way. Okay. Invoke. Let's just try to find. Uh, the syntax. I think it's the same. Syntax, wiki. Okay, we have a cheat sheet right here. Okay, yeah, so that this is what I was looking for with the filter. And so what we want to do is basically, so I'm going to be using two tools for enumerating active directory. I'm going to be using Bloodhound um, and I'm going to I'm going to be using PowerView just for fun, like I said, because this box is like really short and I'm just going to be using multiple tools for the same step. Um, just so you go, guys, maybe some of you might not know how to uh, enumerate active directory with PowerView because everyone knows about Bloodhound, but I'm going to show you guys how to do it with PowerView. So, we should search for FMC only. Okay, I think it's gonna take a little bit time. I think there is a small typo. Identity reference name, match, FMC. I hope I'm not doing a typo. Okay, there we go. I, so yeah, the typo was actually <laughs> in this cheat sheet. I mean, it's really, <laughs> it's, uh, it's really weird. So yeah. Okay, so we have some pretty, uh, so we have some output right here. And uh, let's see. So as you can, uh, as you guys can see, we have this interesting attribute, which is MS. MCS, ADM, PWD, and if I Google it right now, and just like, okay, so this is lab actually. And labs is basically a local administrative password solution, which is actually provided by Microsoft itself. And this is more like a feature and um, seems like this user for whom we have the creds with us, he has right, he has read on labs. So basically he can just read the admin password. And uh, I'm gonna show you guys how you can find this out in using Bloodhound as well. I think Bloodhound should give a uh, labs read uh, in the graph. So, so just like, let's see if it, oops, that's .offsec. I'm just going to search for Bloodhound Python. But before I do that, let me check the comments. OK, so I see no questions. So let's see Bloodhound Python. I think the syntax should be here in uh, Hectrix itself. I just love hack tricks to be honest, guys. Go down Python. Okay, yes. So we have the syntax right here, which we can use. And we can just replace uh, the entries. 
Sí, doble. And we can just put in the IP and the password. Uh, I forgot to take notes. <laughs> Please forgive me, guys. Okay, let's rerun this not exact command for the password. I think I mentioned the IP. Okay, now it should work. Okay, there we go. I'm just gonna take note of this. I'm just gonna scroll up and just like just copy paste it. Okay, so this is how I can dump uh, the uh, ACLs remotely. And what this will do is basically um, dump the JSON files. So instead of using Sharpound uh, on the attacker's machine, you guys can literally use Bloodhound Python from your Kali, Kali Linux, and it will literally give you the JSON. Uh, yeah, so as you guys can see, uh, I've got the JSON files. And now I can just fire up Neo4j console and run Bloodhound. Okay, it started. Um, okay, here we go. Now we can log in. And we can just upload, but before I do it, let, let me just clear up any existing data. So clear database, and just gonna clear this before I get started. Let's upload this right here. So home. Uh, I think it was Hutch. And I can literally just like upload all these files uh, real quick. Okay. Now this has been uploaded and I can just choose this user. I can click and mark user as owned. So since we have the credentials of this user, we can mark him as owned. And in the node info, I can just scroll down if I, so first degree group membership, let's check this out. Okay, so he is a part of domain users. And I don't see anything here except that. So maybe Bloodhound doesn't show labs read. Let me just see if there is any shortest path. Find shortest path to domain admin. Okay, so I don't think it's gonna show us with this. Maybe it's because of blood on Python. It didn't give us the required files. So in this case, I guess we can just use Sharpound and see if that makes any difference. That framework. Let's Answer this real quick to the machine. I'm just gonna 
uh, name it as axle.exe. Oops, I did something wrong. Oh shit, my apologies. Okay, I think I did something wrong. All right. All right, there we go. So let's run Sharpon and uh, it should give me a zip file uh, as soon as it's, it finishes. I think I have to mention something with Yeah, I think, um, so I've tried uh, searching in node info, but I think that on Python, it didn't give me uh, all the JSON files. So that's why it's not showing up. So that's why I'm using Sharpon right now. But I was just like demonstrating how you can use blood on Python to dump ACLs as, as well. Like if you don't have uh, an interactive shell on the machine. So that's when you can uh, leverage blood on Python. And okay, yeah. So we just have to s.exe. So this is the correct syntax. Oh, did I? Dangerous, right? Mm, I don't think it's going to return back for the labs, to be honest, because like I said, it's missing some files. Um, oh. Let's see if you can like view it using um, files from Sharpon. Okay, so we have the zip file from Sharpon, and I can just transfer it to my machine using SMB. And this is where I think a lot of uh, learners, they get stuck. So hopefully they can learn on how they can like transfer machines from the attacker machine to your own Kali. So I'm just gonna fire up my SMB server. So right here, as you can as you guys can see, JD is the share name, and this is the username and the password. So I can just go back to this machine and I can just oops, mention my IP. and the username and the password. So that's just gonna mount the drive. And now we can simply uh, copy this down to Y, which is nothing but my Kali drive. So, okay, now we have this zip file on a Kali. I'm just gonna, okay, there we go. We have the zip file. I'm just gonna remove these JSON files so that you guys don't get confused. And let's go back to Blood Home and clear this database. Okay. And, and now we can just, oops, straight away upload the zip file. Let's see if let's see if we have anything for the sharp home files. Maybe we can have something in the properties. 
I have never uh, enumerated lab three from Bloodhound, to be honest. I always use, um, uh, I always like check the attributes myself, to be honest. And that's how I enumerate whether this user can read labs or not. So let's see if we can. Domain admin. Right. Nope. So yeah, there's something wrong with the zip file we uploaded. And due to some reason it's not it's, it's just not showing. I mean, I guess I have the outdated version of it. I'm not sure what's going down. But yeah, I mean, going back to invoke ACL scanner, we just gonna come back to Bloodhound later. Uh, so let's just wait for it real quick. Oh, this is the, this is really annoying. Oops. All right, there we go. Okay, so as as you guys as you guys can see, like we have uh, this user right here, like it, like FMC Sorley, he has a read property on this attribute, which is basically labs. This is the labs attribute, and uh, as you guys can see right here as well, uh, they can read labs and. We can also enumerate uh, labs, the presence of labs, if we can check the problem file. So as you guys can see, um, let me just, as you guys can see, we have labs installed right here. So this could give you a hint that labs is installed and it could give you an idea that some user might be having reading rights over labs and they can potentially read the uh, admin password. So let's go right ahead with that. And uh, we are going to read labs using different tools. And let's just uh, try to read labs using LDAP search itself. So let me just open the Hattrick's page. I'm gonna do it with you guys. I mean, I, I am aware with the syntax, but I'm just gonna do it using Google so that you guys can understand how I do my OSINT. So labs, matrix, and uh, as you guys can see, there are a lot of ways we can like literally read the labs password. And let's just, before we uh, do the LDAP search command, let's just uh, do this in the uh, attacker machine itself. HDC, because this is the computer name. You can get this name from here, which is host name. And you can also get this from the your end map scan, which is mentioned here, which is the host name. So that's how I know about this. And we can just run this and so yeah, right now, the reason why we cannot read this password is because we are logged in as the service account. And I think that is the reason. But yeah, I mean, we can use LDAP search and just figure out the syntax. LDAP search labs example. Oh, 
Okay, I think it should be somewhere. Maybe we can find a suitable blog which can guide us on how we can use LDAP search. Okay, there we go. Uh, so this blog has the syntax right here, which we can try out. And uh, let's see if that works out. So I think we only need this part, to be honest. Like this is the part that we need in order to read uh, labs. So we can just simply use this syntax and just touch dot attack. Let's see early. And just drop its password right here. And mention this attribute which you, which we want to read. Uh, hopefully it works. Oh, okay, I mentioned the wrong IP. My bad. Okay, I think we messed up somewhere. Hmm. Let's uh search. Let's just use this uh send back that it is to be honest. Offset. Mm, let's see if that works. Oh, okay, and contact LDAP. Already added this to my host files. Okay, interesting. Let's. I guess um, we might want to use something else. Some other blog, I mean. Um, maybe we can get something from here. And that search, this is one of my, uh, this is payload all the things is uh, my other favorite uh, blog, which I keep using for getting help with syntax. Okay, so laps. Okay, so yeah, there we go. Um, I think what we missed is maybe adding the IP address here. Okay, this is sweating me to be honest. <laughs> but we we got this. We we gonna solve. We gonna figure this out. Thing I had, uh, I think I did had a syntax with me, but
Um, let's try using net exec, and we're gonna come back to uh, LDAP search. Um, because I think I have the syntax with me. LDAP IP early. There we go. So as you guys can see, we uh, we can easily use net exec, which is the new implementation of crap exec. And it shows us the lab's password, which is this right here. And let's just confirm if this password is correct and we are able to log in. And it's pond. So yeah, this is basically how you guys can use NetExec to like uh, dump labs remotely. And uh, let's see if we have access to, to WinRM, if we have the credentials of FMC thirdly. Okay, so we can't really use, uh, so we don't really have an interactive shell as this user right here, but we can still do it from here by uh, specifying the, the cred object. So let me just show you guys real quick how you can just do it. Okay, so let's just go back to the hat tactics page and let's see what tools we can use to uh, dump the lab password uh, like from the victim machine. So we use uh, we use the net exec, which is the new crap map exec, and uh, okay, so this doesn't has really a lot of tools. We can check payload. All the things for more life active directory. Thanks. And we have labs right here. So this is from Windows, but we are on Linux right now. And we have Labs Toolkit. We have PyLabs as well. So let's give this tool a try. Let's clone this and let's see what syntax they're using. Okay. Perfect. Now we just have to mention the threads. And we can specify the password and the IP which I've already exported. And I believe it should work. Oh yeah, there we go. Uh, so I'm using this tool for the first time with you guys because, you know, like I said, just for fun. And uh, yeah, so you can also use PyLabs uh, to get the password. And just for fun, let's, oh yeah, Labs Dumper as well. Uh, let's use that, uh, to be honest, yeah. So Labs Dumper. 
But to be honest, I'm quite impressed with uh, NetExec. Like, wh what do you guys think about NetExec, to be honest? Like, uh, tell me in the comments, like, because it really worked out really well for us as well. So, let's clone this quick. Jumper. That's. Also, it allows PTH as well, which is really cool. So, in case if we have the hash only and we don't know, we don't have any clear experiences, we can actually do PTH and read labs, which is quite convenient, if you ask me. There we go. So yeah, uh, nice recommendation uh, for Let's Jumper. Yeah, it's like, uh, so CME is actually archived and uh, the the founder who like founded CME, he actually backed out. And I think the rest of the people, they went ahead to um, working on the new tool, which is NetExec. So I guess it's sort of like a continuation of CME, but uh, yeah. And what else we can do? Yeah, let's let's try PTH because I'm really curious on if it would be able to uh, do the PTH. So let's try if we can pass the hash and read and still read that. So let's uh, use an online uh, to generate an NTLM, NTLM hash. So then we can do PTH. So yeah, so this is the NTLM hash. Okay, let's see if this works. Um, oops. I have to uh, mention this. Um, so this is hutch dc dot hutch dot offset. <coughs> Sorry. And this is hutch dot offset. And let's see if that works. Okay, <laughs> something happened. So where did we mess up? Let's check out domain.local. Hmm. Maybe it would work if we do it like this. Oh yeah, okay, there we go. So all I had to do was basically mention the left like the lm and the uh, uh the nt and the lm so we've got the password using like pth which is something really new i've never done that to be honest so this is really impressive so i mean that's how we can just like read lab and uh Let's figure out for LF search. And let's see on how I can do this. Let's see if you can find this uh, in my own machine, which I did on HTB.
Okay, so I think this should be the correct syntax. And I think it should work now. If this is going to be much not offset. Just mention the host name and the password. Um, okay. So now I'm pretty certain that it will work with LDAP search. The, the syntax of LDAP search is like really complicated to be honest, guys. Like, okay, there we go. So yeah, I'm just gonna do less on this so that I, we can like go through this. So we are able to read this attribute, the value. So this is basically an attribute which is of the labs, and this is where the password is stored. And since our since this user uh, FMC since he has the permission to read labs, that's why we can read this password, and we can simply use even when I am. IP administrator. And we should be in already. Oops. Who am I? So we have successfully pawned the domain admin. And that was it for the exploitation part, guys. And now comes the mitigation part. And that's why I requested you guys to stay over because this part will be really interesting. And in this part, I will be basically acting as the sys admin and we will fix this machine. So we are gonna talk about how to fix LDAP anonymous authentication. I mean, uh, because this is, uh, in my opinion, it's not, it, it, this is not uh, realistic at all. Like no sysadmin would do this uh, setting on his end. Um, so we're gonna fix this, but first, before we do that, let's just open RDP. How to open RDP using PowerShell. So let's open RDP. So yeah, in this, uh, so this is going to be like really short, like 10 minutes, and I'm going to be acting as a sys admin, and we are going to be acting. Uh, so we were attacker before, now we are the sys admin. So change of roles. So let's um, enable RDP. So that we have um, interactive access to the machine. And we can simply uh, use this to open the firewall. And now if we check NetSet, uh, we should see uh, RDP open right now. Okay. Yep, so RDP is open and I can confirm this. Uh, I can confirm this using Netcat. IP 3389. Okay, yep. So RDP is open for business. And we can just uh, use X3 RDP to like log into this machine. And just, uh, okay, I forgot the credentials. My bad. Okay, there they are. So. Let's RDP to this machine. So in the comments, like what, what do you guys think uh, should be fixed in, in this machine? Like, let me know in the comments and let's fix this. 
So according to my opinions, like, uh, first of all, we should start by fixing anonymous authentication of LDAP. Like, let me know in the comments what else do you guys think should be fixed? Because I think uh, WebDAV is more like a feature. Um, it's like an extra layer and it's for convenience if like people are collaborating on a project. And I think Labs is also a feature which is provided by Microsoft. So these are really not vulnerabilities according to me, it's just misconfigurations. Yeah, user description, that's correct. User description. Yep, that's correct. I agree with that. So let's fix this. So let's start with user description. And then we are going to fix anonymous LDAP authentication. And uh, I think I had researched for a block on this. Oh yeah, there we go. So this is basically what I Googled on how to enable anonymous authentication in LDAP because uh, we'll be figuring out how to do the reverse actually. So let's see. Let me just do it full screen actually. Full screen. Okay. There we go. Now it's full screen. So for the user description, we can start by going to uh, the server manager. And from here, what we want to do is go to ADUC, which stands for Active Directory Users and Computers. And right here, what we want to do is um, let me see if I can just zoom this real quick. Okay, never mind. So right here, we're gonna find our user, which is FMC. Okay, there we go. So description is set to like this, like you said. So let's fix this. And we're gonna, uh, just like we can just like try harder next time. Apply, okay. Now let's see if you can still read the description. Okay, so this time we won't be able to read the description. Okay, so as you guys can see, we have the description try harder next time. And so we fixed the first part, which was the description. Now the second part is to fix the, yeah, um, thanks man. Like, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's exactly why I, so we thought of this idea uh, and just replying to uh, VASK123, and just replying to your comment, like uh, I just thought of an idea to like how to make it more interesting. So at the end, you guys won't be having questions on why this happened. Like what was the reason behind this? So that's why we decided to do this mitigation segment. And uh, so yeah, now if I somehow get uh, authenticated to LDAP anonymously, I cannot use this description and I will be stuck here. So we fix this, but still we have anonymous LDAP, which is really dangerous according to me. And it could expose some other attributes which we don't want to expose. So let's check this blog out. And uh, it's asking me to open ADSI edit. Okay, let's check this out where this is. ADSI. Okay, there we go. So it's right under tools, ADSI edit. I'm just gonna click on it. And then it's asked me, 
browses the end services, Windows NT directory services. Configuration card. Click connect to. Okay, action menu, we have to click connect to. Okay, there we go. And we can just go to CN services, Windows NT. So we have, I do have like a PowerShell command as well. Um, so I will be showing that as well. Uh, I did a really hard research to find that PowerShell command. Uh, so yeah, uh, services, Windows NT. Um, I think this might be for an older version of Windows. So I'm not really sure. Oh yeah, it's like 2000. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's not going to be applicable to here. Uh, still, I think we can figure it out. Okay, never mind. Let's just uh, use PowerShell for this point, honestly, because it's really easy to understand with PowerShell. So as you guys can see, I researched this. Um, I actually got this from a friend. He did this scenario on his own machine and he shared this um, uh, PowerShell syntax with me. And what this basically does is enable anonymous authentication. So let's go to, through the step by step. I'm just gonna zoom it in right here. I'm just gonna check the comments if I miss anything. Yeah, I think I'm uh, connected as a wrong uh, instance, but PowerShell is the best, to be honest. Um, and as a sysadmin, and also a sysadmin never uses uh, the uh, GUI version, so he always uses PowerShell. So since we, I'm acting as a sysadmin, I will be using PowerShell. So what this is doing is basically, first, it is setting up a target DN, which is basically what was written on the blog here which is services, Windows NT, and directory service. Oops. So this is just the basically the LDAP name of uh, the LDAP service, which we want to enable anonymous authentication on. And as you guys can see right here, it is getting the AD object, which is basically translating it into something what LDAP can understand. And then what it, it, it is doing exactly is setting this particular uh, attribute, which is called DS heuristics. And it is setting it up to two. Now this two actually means anonymous authentication is allowed. But if I set it to one, it won't be allowed anymore. And next up, what we want to do is actually uh, adjust this DS ACS command. Oh, shit. let me just explain what this means. So, so this right here is basically granting um, uh, anonymous access to this user anonymous logon. And uh, this is basically just granting him this rights for logging anonymously. So what we can do is replace this by one. So that basically means that anonymous login is not allowed. So this two means allowed and one means not allowed. And what we want to do next is basically remove instead of grant. And this is just going to remove all the ACLs of the of this uh, anonymous logon user. And now we can just pick it up and just like paste. 
Okay. I think it ran command computer successfully. And now if we try it again, let me just show you guys real quick. Yep. See? So we successfully uh, uh, managed to like disable anonymous authentication on LDAP. As you guys can see, I executed the same command. Let me just show you uh, again. Let's enable it again. And let me enable this again. So what I'm gonna do is show you the difference. So I'm gonna enable anonymous logon again. So this basically right here, it will enable anonymous authentication on LDAP. So and now we can uh, now now we can uh, authenticate to LDAP again. But using the same command, if I disable this, And now we cannot. So we have managed to successfully fix this machine. And I don't, I won't be really fixing up, uh, I won't be uh, fixing web DAV and labs because they are not really, these are not really uh, misconfigurations because it is more like a feature. And since the user won't be able to read the description and they won't be able to authenticate uh, anonymously using LDAP, they won't be able to go through web DAV and read labs as well. So we have managed to fix this machine as well. So firstly, we attacked this machine and now we fixed it. And uh, I believe that's all my time uh, till now. I, I hope I did a great job. And uh, if you have any questions in the comments, just let me know before we wrap this up. And this is just like a small summary of what we did. We covered LDAP, we covered WebDAV, we covered labs, and we did the mitigation strategies. I'm just gonna add impersonation privilege as well. So yeah, that's what we just covered in this live stream. And I hope I did a good job in uh, both the attack and the defense. So this was basically attack and defense in a nutshell. And I hope you guys had a good time. And I hope this stream was educational and fun as well, of course, because that's what we're here for. Um, so top, just replying to top agent, I won't suggest using RL wrap. Uh, you can just uh, go to the invoke uh, on PTY. So you have to start your listener like this, basically, uh, just as it's as is mentioned right here. So just like this, and then only it will work. Then only then only it will give you tab completion, and uh, you the shell won't get cancelled as well, like the control C functionality. Yeah, I think. Um, so say, uh, just replying to sick in the mind, I think that blog is related to the Active Directory version 2003, and I am on a Windows Server 2019. So I'm gonna be leaving this uh, as an extra mile to you guys to figure out how to mitigate labs, uh, sorry, how to mitigate um, the anonymous authentication to LDAP using uh, the GUI. I showed you guys how to do it using uh, PowerShell, but now I'm going to leave it up to you guys to figure it out on how to do it using GUI. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, I think we are way above time. And I would really like to thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And that's it from my side. All right. Hope you guys have a good night. And thank you guys again for tuning in. Cheers.